Hi everybody, it's Jessica from Chambray Blue Sewing. Welcome to part two of the Key West Hawaiian shirt. Now the shirt comes in a men's style and a women's style. The construction is essentially the same as you can see in the first part of the video series. The only part that's a little bit different is the collar. The collar itself is, is consistent between the two patterns, the men's and women's. Um, it consists of a pointed collar for the upper piece, like this one. And then the lower collar or the collar stand is shaped like this. So that is consistent between the two patterns that will not change. The only difference is the men's pattern does not have a facing. So a lot of women's patterns have facings in them. And I've read, you know, both people seem to prefer facings or no facings. It's sort of a personal preference thing. I personally like the men's method without the facing. So I'm going to show you how it's supposed to get put together um, if you're using the pattern with the facing in the women's design or the pattern that doesn't have the facing in the men's design. Okay, let's get started. Okay, just to clarify, this is the men's shirt. And as you can see, here's the collar. There it is, it goes all the way around the collar stand. It is all top stitched on all parts. And in the front, it looks like this. So there's a little bit of space between where the top collar ends and the bottom collar begins. This one I actually made a mistake on. So it should be a totally straight edge here. Um, I had added a little bit to this pattern to fit my son's large neck. So I was off just a speck when I sewed it together, but it should be um, a straight edge there. And as you can see, if you turn it to the inside, you will notice there it, it's just a narrow facing finish on the inside. Uh, the women's pattern will have a larger facing that will get secured up here into the shoulder line. So that's the difference between the two patterns. Um, and we're going to go over to the sewing machine and I will show you how to stitch it. Before we go to the machine, I should mention that the pieces are um, interfaced with a lightweight Pellon fusible interfacing. You only need to interface one of the two collar stand pieces and then turn up a narrow hem, um, five eighths inch hem on the edge, the lower edge of this before we start sewing. It'll make it easier to deal with later on. And then likewise, uh, here is your upper collar and um, you want to have interfacing on one of these upper collar pieces as well. So we're going to begin by stitching the upper collar sections together. We have right sides facing together. I'm using a regular straight stitch with a 3.0 stitch length. It's helpful when you get to the corner to take one stitch diagonally. It makes it easier to turn the collar point. After sewing, you're going to trim the seam allowance and especially trim it at the corners 
So you can turn it right side out. Trim your seam allowances to quarter inch. Turn it right side out. And push the corner out till you get a nice sharp point. You can press this if you want to a little bit. Then we're gonna baste along the edge here just to hold those edges together with the 5.0 seam allowance, uh, 5.0 stitch length and the quarter inch seam allowance. If your corners aren't perfect, you can use a pin to pull them out a little bit more. Make sure that you get a good point there. And then kind of line them up, make sure that they look good. Okay. Next step is to stitch the under collar. So here you have the interface piece, and this is the piece with the hem that's pressed. So you're going to put right sides together. I'm gonna match my center back, so I'm just gonna fold this in half to find the center back. Put a pin in it. the center back of my upper collar. I'm gonna find that and put a pin in and then we can match our pins this way. Now when you put the pieces together you want to flip the collar so that you have interfacing to the non-interfacing part of this collar. And the reason you want to do that is because when you're wearing it, you want the interfacing to face outside the body, so away from the neck, and that's how it's gonna work. Trust me on this. So we're gonna pin that together at the center back. I'm gonna match my notches here. All the way to the end. Work the other way. I'm going to turn it over now and we're going to pin the last part of this collar stand onto the other part of the collar. And when you sew this on, you wanna keep the folded part free. So we're gonna start stitching on this side of the fold. 
I match my seam allowances, match your raw edges here. This is really a lot of painting. I don't normally do all this, but. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. So before we sew, we wanna just check our work. If we turned it like so, just to get a visual, that's what our collar is going to look like. We have interfacing on this side, which will be away from the neck, facing out. And when you turn the top collar down, you will have interfacing on this side, away from the body. So that's how it's gonna work. So we're gonna stitch it. We're not gonna stitch, leave this uh, area free. Five eighths inch seam allowance here. Don't sew across your pins, make sure you're taking them out. through all layers. So next you're going to trim the seam allowances to a quarter inch. And then in order for this to turn properly, we need to clip this curve. So you're gonna make little triangle cuts about every quarter inch around this curve with your sharp scissors. Do not cut through the stitch line. Just three or four of them will work. And then when we go to turn it, it will have a nice, nice round appearance. So I'm going to press this and then we're going to top stitch it. Okay, here at the ironing board, we're ready to press. Use lots of steam. Using the Taylor's clapper really helps get a nice crisp finish for the collar. That's what it looks like on the inside here. Make sure that your fabric is not rolling up here. You want it real flat. Like 
like so. Now we are gonna go and top stitch it. Okay, so the only step left then is to finish top stitching. I have just pinned the lower portion of the collar together over that collar seam. And I've just folded back this. Uh, you will have a facing already on here, so that should be finished. So if you're going to top stitch, this is how I would top stitch the collar stand using a 3.0 stitch. I usually stitch even along the um, button, the part where the buttons are, button front placket. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to stitch the collar stand. So we're starting right at the base of the collar stand. I am taking a stitch forward and then one stitch backwards, only one. Very delicate. Um, you wanna make sure it lines up, everything lines up nicely. So going forward then, we're going to use the inside of the presser foot with an eighth of an inch seam allowance as my guide. And I'm just gonna stitch along the top edge of the collar stand. through all layers. So I have only half my collar attached, but you can get the idea. This is what it's going to look like on the other side. You have a row of top stitching here and you have a row of top stitching here. And this will continue down the, the front placket. You can close this bottom part with hand stitches or you can top stitch that as well. If you're going to top stitch the bottom part of the collar stand, I suggest you baste it together by hand I'm not going to do that for this demonstration. I'm just going to show you how to stitch. You want to stitch from the right side of the garment this time in the ditch, and you're going to be catching the fabric on the back side. It's a little bit harder to do because you're sewing blind. So here, we're going to put the needle in and use the center part of the presser foot as a guide. I'm pulling the fabric apart with my hands as I work. Make sure you don't catch your pins in there. That's what that will look like on the outside of the shirt. And then on the inside, it will be just a tiny row of stitches right along the very edge of this piece here. And that's how to sew the collar. Thanks for watching.